Being a child of the late 60s, I love watches that pay homage to that era. From the colors, the layout, the design, it, for me, it's it's like a magnet. I, I see watches like this, you know, with their orange, that, that rehout with that tachymetric scale. For me, this is stunning. This is 1970s styling, and I, I, I get attracted to it. I get I get drawn to watches like this. And when this company reached out to for me to have a look at these watches to review them, I thought, okay, look, you know what? Send them down, see what they're like. And I tell you what, very pleasantly surprised at the build quality. Attention to detail, and looking at this orange one, the complex eggshell dial is just a beautiful. Now the watches aren't without their flaws. There are some issues. In fact, there are some flaws, I would say. There are some negatives, but there also are some flaws, which I will point out. But overall, for the money, gee, some really nice, decent watches here. And I want to share them with you guys today. Now you notice the pop-up, this video is sponsored by MMI Watches, however that will not affect my review, they have no input into the content as normal, and I'll tell you exactly what I see, what I don't like, what I do like, all the rest. So let's get stuck into it guys. Now if you look at the case shape of both watches, they're pretty much the same shape. One of them is a quartz chronograph, the other one's an automatic. But shape wise, dimension wise, they're exactly the same. I measure a case diameter at 40 millimeters on both watches. The lug to lug distance is exactly 46.9. The lug width is 22 mil, and the only variance I find is in the case height. The black automatic comes in at 13.6 millimeters with a flat sapphire crystal, and the yellow chronograph comes in at 14.4 mil with its double dome sapphire. Now the weight of the watches are 169 grams for the automatic and 153 grams for the quartz chronograph. And that crown, comes in at 6.9 millimeters and it's a screw down crown and it's also loomed. Now I did say that I was impressed with the build quality of these watches and you know what? They are built beautifully. They're finished really well and one thing that really sort of caught my attention straight off the bat was this bracelet. You've got a nice H-link bracelet with screw pins and we get a lot of watches with screw pins and I tell you what, if you have a look at these screw pins, they're incredible. They're thick, they're solid, they're easy to get out, they're easy to put in. Now that's a screw pin, now that's a screw pin. The attention to detail and the quality finish is what blew me away for these watches, and especially at that price point. We've got this watch here, it's an automatic, and it comes in at 288 US dollars, and this one comes in at 321. I think very fresh, very nice, clean designs, especially this, especially this drawing its inspiration from the 70s. You know, I, I didn't actually think I was gonna like this. Uh, when they said to me, you wanna review the automatic, I said, sure, not a problem. And then they said, look, well, we might as well throw this in as well, check it out, see what you think. And I've been wearing this. Even though they wear exactly the same because the, the wrist presence is the same, I've been wearing this all week. It's beautiful. It, it just reminds me of the 70s. I love the yellow. I love that orange yellow uh, accents. I love the eggshell dial. That rehout is like an aluminium anodized orange. It's gorgeous. It's drop dead gorgeous. But as I mentioned before, there are some flaws that I find with both watches and I'll share that. But before we get on to that, I'll show you quickly one of the main features of both watches. And that's that date display. Both these watches feature a rotor date display complication. So what that means is you can see the date it's in a circular pattern here and at the outskirts here. As the date changes, that little orange marker basically gradually goes from the third to the fourth and just clicks over. So it's quite a nice way of reading the date. I like it in the fact that they've incorporated it in the quartz, that's quite nice. Now both watches feature Superluminoma Grade X1C3 as well as Stand C3. And I think the application has been done really, really well. It's bright, it's legible, even the rotor date display, the orange segment in there, that's even loomed as well. So I think they've really thought this out. And both those crowns are also signed and loomed. Now if we get back to that bracelet, like I said, you've got a solid H-link, quick release end links, as you can see on both of them. There's screw pins, like we mentioned before, which are fantastic. And it tapers from 22 down to 20 with a milled clasp, flip lock as well as twin triggers to release. You've got five micro adjustments, so there's plenty of room just in case of the wrist swelling. Now visually speaking with the crystals, they both offer different crystals. This is a double dome sapphire and I really like its look. I really like its look. This one's a flat sapphire. I think it's about three mil thick. 
There's why, that's why you get your 300 meters of water resistance. Both the crystals offer 10 layers of anti-reflective coating and I've not had an issue with legibility inside, outside, indoors, outdoors, everywhere. They've been great. Now both bezels on the watch are 120 click unidirectional. The stainless steel inserts, it's actually iron plated. It looks like ceramic, but it's not. But as you saw before, it is loom filled. So I'll give you guys an action. It's nice and easy to move on this one. A little bit of back plan, not a great deal, but accuracy wise, spot on. Now on the wrist, both watches wear exactly the same. The exact same dimensions. The only difference, like I said, is the height coming in at, obviously one having a flat sapphire, the other one having a double dome. So that's pretty much negligible. But as far as the experience of the wearability, they're exactly the same. And for me personally, I've actually enjoyed them both. They've been really comfortable, a real surprise because I did mention that the build quality was great, but even, look, even just unscrewing that crown, I've had a lot of, this has got an NH35. I've had a lot of NH35s in the past, and I'll tell you what, this doesn't feel like one. It actually it actually feels like a Swiss movement. It really does. It's like an Eta or a Solita. It's winding, the, the resistance is just really, really pleasurable. So that's, that's a surprise for me. And, you know, as far as screw down crown, yeah, lovely, not a problem. Buttery smooth, 300 meters of water resistance. Even the chronograph, even the Quartz VK67, I'll unscrew that. And I find that if I was to hack it, and the, there's a resistance that's just beautiful. So I don't know what sort of magic, what sort of witchcraft they've done on these watches, but I tell you what, it, it really feels sublime. It feels dampened perfectly. So I'm impressed at the quality of both the watches, but like I said at the beginning, there are some flaws in, in the watches which I think that could be rectified. And for me personally, if you look at this one, if you look at the chapter ring, there's basically really fine markers all the way across. There isn't minute markers that come across. And if you wanted to set the time exactly, if I wanted to set the time at, let's say, 52 or 53 just around there. I don't know where that is. I really don't know where that is because there is not a, a minute marker to show me that. So that's a potential flaw. There aren't any other gradations or anything that I can go off. There are on this side on the bezel, but that's about it. So that's one potential flaw. Another potential flaw, or I'd say a negative for me anyway, is those pushes. Uh, they look like they're screwed down, but they're not. So for me, if you're gonna supply pushes, just make them standard pushes. There's no need to make them fake, screw down, well, they don't even move. It's just a standard push, a start, stop, and reset. So you don't need to have that there, but again, that's a design element, totally unnecessary. That, that's my take on that. The loom on both watches, I think is very, very good, but on both the hands, I think they could have benefited from just that little bit more, especially the uh, minute hand. The minute hat could have done with that a little bit more loom. That's from personal observation. And that's about it. But look, being prototypes, obviously you're gonna see a lot of marks and, and what have you on these. They, they might be rectifying that particular area, I'm not sure. But just wanted to point that out for you. Now as far as positives, gee, I tell you what, build quality, exceptional, the finishing is great, the bracelet, the screws, that rotor date display on both of them, love it. So I think they've done really well. The feel of the crowns, the way these things feel when I unscrew them, is especially that automatic. I mean, that does not feel like an NH35. It really does not. And I'm totally blown away. I was expecting your standard run of the mill, you know, Seiko movement in here, and yet it feels really nice. So that's, that's impressive. And the dial. I love the dial on this. I love the eggshell dial. I think it's quality. I don't know whether the video is going to do this justice, guys, but I think the quality of, of the dial on this is so nice. You know, from that uh, rehout, the colors. It, it, look, it's just all vintage 70s vibe. I love it. I love it. So let me know your thoughts, guys. Um, I'll leave the links in the description where you can get these watches. This is the tar oh, sorry, this is the turret 300 meter. It's a version two. And this is the marine chronograph. 300 meters, 100 meters, a lot of fun watches, especially this. Didn't think I was gonna like it. I'm really impressed. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your comments, guys, and we'll see you all in the next video.